Uh, and as I say, we, we have Dr. Alan Organ on this morning, and he's going to bring on a very special guest with him. And you will be absolutely not only delighted, but I'm sure riveted to be hearing what he has to say this morning. It's my privilege to introduce him, and I'm not quite sure where to begin because Dr. Allen is such a multifaceted professional, having touched areas of life all the way from cellular biology, uh, you know, cutting-edge findings in, in that arena to ministering to children and their families uh, in the trenches as a pediatrician, uh, touching on civic policy as he has proven some leadership in that arena. It's, it's just no surprise to me that he's able to speak to so many people from so many walks of life. Beyond that, what's so very heartening to me is to know a physician who actually wants to prevent you from taking medicines and from having treatments. He actually would love to have every single one of us live such a healthy and long life in the most natural way possible so as perhaps not to need physicians in the future. And um, I just want to welcome Dr. Organ this morning and, and thank him for being on the call and just hand it over to you, Alan. Thank you for being here. Oh, my pleasure. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm going to start off a little bit, tell you a story about myself, why I do what I do, that I'm not sure anybody has ever heard this. I'm not even sure Marcus has ever heard this. Um, a number of years ago, um, as a solo practitioner in pediatrics, which meant that I was on call every night of my life by myself. Uh, when I went out of town, I either took calls when I was on vacation or uh, I coerced somebody to cover for me for a couple of days so that I could turn my phone off. Um, but I decided I had heard one of my mothers or fathers in my practice tell me that everybody should change their profession at 55 years of age. And so as I approached 55 years of age, I decided maybe there was something else that I was meant to do. So I retired, and um, I think I lasted about 30 days before I got bored. And so I decided I had other things to do. So I started writing medical websites. Um, I had an expertise in it. I'd done it before, and, of course, I had the knowledge. And I went out, and I started recruiting doctors that would let me write websites for them. And my sister-in-law called me one day and said, I have a chiropractor that I want you to, to go in and introduce yourself to. He needs a website. And, and uh, I went in and met him and, and started writing a website for him. And he kept saying to me, um, what's, what's your attitude about supplements? And I looked at him and I said, nobody needs any. And he says, what do you mean nobody needs any? I said, nobody needs any. We don't need supplements. We've got drugs. So he kind of laughed and he says, well, I want you to look at a few things. And I said, uh, I'm really not interested in them. He said, no, I want you to look at them because I want you to write about them. And I said, okay. So I started looking at them and he says, you know, I have an MD that works with me and he's into supplements. I'd, I'd like you to, to look at what, what he's talking about. And I said, uh, let me write the website, and um, uh, we'll, we'll take it from there. Well, Christmas came, and all of a sudden he remembered that I was really an employee of his, and so he called at the last minute and said, we're having an office Christmas party. Why don't you come? Bring your wife. Um, we're having dinner. So I showed up, and I didn't know anybody there except for the chiropractor, uh, but I knew who the MD was, and he was there. So I sat down to him, or next to him, and, and because I had nothing else to say, I said, tell me about your supplements. And he started talking, and after about 30 seconds, I said, stop. I said, let me tell you what I did in a previous life, and this is when I, when I was a cell biologist, and I told him what I had done. And everything that he was telling me, I already knew. And I sat up all night thinking about what he had said, and the next morning I, I called him and said, I want to know more about your supplements. And I said, I hate you because I got no sleep last night. I sat up all night thinking about what you said and remembering what I learned. And that's how I started on my journey with supplements. Um, and, of course, I'm, I'm very picky about which ones I use. 
I, I researched them as thoroughly as I can. And uh, one day, um, my wife and I, we, we try and go a couple times a month to to uh, Barnes and Noble, and, and I I search books and read magazines and try and research new things. And I picked up a physician's desk reference, something that I was familiar with, listing of all the drugs in the world. Um, except I picked up the one for supplements, and I didn't realize they had one. Uh, it was much bigger than the one on drugs, because obviously there are a lot of ingredients in the world, much more than the number of drugs that we have. And I opened it up and started reading, and I realized one of the guys that helped write this book was a fraternity brother and a chemistry major at UCLA with me. <coughs> so I thought, wow, he's an MD, he's a PhD just like me, and he's head of human nutrition at UCLA, and he's saying that if you add a few supplements to your diet, you can have a profound effect on your life. So I thought, maybe there's more to this uh, um, than I realized. So I got involved with a supplement company, and, and I liked the products because I, I knew how they worked. Um, it was some of the stuff that I had actually done research with 40 years before, and um, I got involved in the company and then realized that the company wasn't exactly ethical, and uh, I actually ended up not staying with them. Uh, it was a, uh, a parting that was uh, not mutual. I just, I left. Um, and I didn't want to do anything until Marcus called me one day and said, I want you to look at some products, and I said, this is this MLM, and of course all of you have heard that story, and, and uh, I, I can't be happier that, that I'm here. But I learned something. In, in this uh, passage from being a traditionally trained uh, board-certified pediatrician who, who knew that the only way you could treat people was to treat them with drugs um, to the way I am right now. Um, and I have to thank my chiropractor friends for that because they reminded me that as a cell biologist, I know exactly what happens in a single cell which is no different than the single cells that are in our bodies, and you can correct a lot of things by treating a single cell. So if you have healthy cells, you have healthy tissues. Healthy tissues give you healthy tissue systems. Tissue systems give you healthy organs. Healthy organs give you healthy organ systems, and healthy organ systems give you a healthy organism. And in the case that we're dealing with, is that the human body is programmed to do exactly what it's supposed to do by giving the right nutrients. As a matter of fact, this morning, um, as I was uh, preparing for talking, I uh, was on the Internet, and then there was a published article that showed that the major ingredient in milk thistle now decreases melanoma growth. This is, this is a plant, people. And we've got a biologically active thing in there that, that deals with the cells. So I, mean, I tell my, my students when I teach them um, that the future of medicine is no medicine. And I'm seeing that every day. Um, just the other day, uh, a report was released that a couple of doctors used a 3D printer. Instead of using paper, they used plastic to print it on and created a trachea for an infant that was destined to die because um, he was born without a trachea and he's about nine or ten months out of surgery and he's playing the first time he's been out of the hospital uh, since he was born. Uh, we've got bladders that are being grown in Italy and hearts that are pumping in, in um, um, France, all from our own tissues, treating them correctly so that we can regrow parts of our body that need to be fixed. So without any further ado, uh, I want to tell you a brief story and then introduce my friend and colleague. Um, about a month ago, I was walking out of a grocery store with my wife, and we happened upon this couple. Um, she was involved in Jewish singles with my wife, and my wife was single, and she was single, um, and they knew each other real well but I knew her for a much longer time. I 
dated practically everybody in her sorority except her uh, at some time when I was in college. And she introduced me to her husband, uh, who happens to be a chiropractor. And I said, what's your main em- emphasis? And we started talking about obesity and joint problems and treating people. And, and I looked at him and I said, oh, I got something for you. And we started talking about slender eyes. And in five minutes, we had this bond between the two of us that couldn't be broken. It was as if I'd known him my whole life and that we were one person because we thought the same. So I would like to introduce my good friend, Dr. David, who's in practice here in in, uh, Kansas City, uh, where I live, and let him tell you a little bit about himself, and then we're going to tell you why we are so turned on about what's coming out of RX and what the future brings. So, David, are you online? Yes, <clears throat> Thank you, Alan. I, I am. And uh, uh, for those listening, I've been in practice uh, this last March 45 years. I've had five radio shows here in Kansas City. I've been practicing uh, as a chiropractor and in the last 20 years pretty much as a clinical nutritionist. Uh, I, sp- I specialize in clinical nutrition and allergy. At one time, I did an enormous amount of laboratory work. Uh, I no longer test that way very often. Uh, The primary method of testing in my office is muscle testing. It is not medically recognized. Uh, It does not fit the medical paradigm uh, at all. <clears throat> there are almost always medical people in my practice receiving care, uh, although I must say for the most part they do not refer. And a great many medical students and chiropractic students shadow uh, in my office. The, uh, the theory behind muscle testing and the history of muscle testing goes back to uh, chiropractors back in the 70s. And today, if, if you watch most sporting events, what you will see is chiropractors roaming the sidelines, and most of them are doing muscle testing on the athletes to determine what needs to be done next. Uh, if you watch uh, professional volleyball, you'll see many of the volleyball players with, with very, very interesting taping on their shoulders, knees, hips, etc. Those are all designed uh, by members of my profession. And uh, most of the taping, the areas of taping, the types of taping, are determined by muscle testing. Uh, muscle testing is a method of accessing a patient's subconscious. And medicine has a difficult time with that to the point where if you have any kind of problems with your subconscious, they usually ship you off to a psychiatrist, and you really can't separate the mind and the body. The subconscious has access to this enormous energy and information field that we live in. And it's the subconscious that keeps you breathing. It's the subconscious that runs the kidneys, the filters, the brain, the computer, the heart, the pump, the liver, the factory. And we don't even think about it. But this intelligence, this, and it is, a, it is an actual personality that lives inside us that we tend to ignore, don't even recognize it's there, runs our body. And, and it coordinates the trillions of cells that make up our body. And it knows what it needs. It knows what it has to do to accomplish optimum health. It's programmed to bring us optimum health throughout our lives. And if we give it what it wants and what it needs, it is capable of doing that. And you can use muscle testing to ask someone's body, what do you need? To support, uh, what area do we need to support first? Let's, let's start at the beginning. 
uh, for doing a muscle test scan in, in the office. Where do you want me to start? So in my practice, I don't guess. That's called a diagnosis in medicine, a guess, an educated guess. I ask a patient's body, what do you want me to fix first? Then, what do you want me to use to fix it? And how much of what you want me to use do you want me to suggest? And then I tell the patient what that patient's body has told me. Not only do I check my patients that way, but I test everything I use in my office that way. And I mean to tell you, most products out there that you buy in health food stores, heaven forbid, should you purchase your nutritional supplements at places like Walmart or many of the MLMs, You're buying products that simply do not function at the physiological level well at all or cause as many problems as they fix. And I remember telling Alan when we met outside of the supermarket, and that is a funny story. Uh, I'm just just not into MLMs. He just broke out into a grin. And if you've seen Dr. Organ and you've seen him grin, you know exactly what I mean because his entire face lit up. And, and he was like, let me tell you a story. And he's a great storyteller. And he did. And I had to laugh. And I said, you know, I have people trying to get me into MLMs four, five, six times a year because I have a, a, a very large pharmacy associated with my practice. Uh, and I've been doing this for 45 years. Uh, and we move a lot of product. And But I, I've not found an MLM with quality product that I felt I could trust. Now, there are MLMs out there that have good product lines, but I, I, I knew people who were involved in them, and, and frankly, from an integrity position, I was very, very uncomfortable. But there was something about Dr. Organ I was comfortable with right off the bat. So I ordered some of the products, I think about $3,000 worth of product, and we set out testing. I was very, very impressed with the uh, company Bill of Rights. That really got my attention. And then th- these products test well. Uh, very, very impressed with the, uh, w- with the quality. And it was interesting. I was speaking with a patient about this, <clears throat> and I shared this with Alan. And it had to do with cost. And... The patient said, yes, but, you know, I've, 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 I've looked at the cost of some of the professional quality products that are available, and they're less than, than the products that you're telling me about. And I said, yes, they are. And one of the challenges in some areas of MLMs, when, when the MLMs do not have really unique Items and some of the some of the Eric's items are truly unique. I personally have tried the uh, the Slenderized products and, and they're and they're not good products. They're excellent products. I don't think there's anything on the market that can compare to these products. Uh, I've had one particular patient uh, who's been on medication, causing that patient to gain weight. And we can talk about that perhaps some other time uh, at a later conference. But this patient really struggled for a long time, and it's someone I'm very close to. Started on the, on the products, on the Slenderize, and the weight just started coming off slowly. But when we start talking about someone who's been trying to lose weight for four, five, and six months, and trying everything, I mean hard Atkins, Fat, you name it, fasting every, uh, two days a week uh, and getting on Slenderize and missing it probably a third of the time and not hardly changing the diet at all and losing two to four pounds a week, I've not been able to achieve that in my practice with any approach in 45 years. Uh, some of these products are truly outstanding. But I told this patient, I said, you know, yes, they are. But if you don't have a health condition that needs medical treatment and you know you need supplements, if you're smart enough to have figured that out, and frankly, 
the, the smart money for the last 50 years has been on supplementation. Because you can go to the library and you can read brilliant books, and there's a half a dozen of them written every year that absolutely confirm the need to do And that's been going on for over 50 years. Okay? So that's really important. And I said, you know, these are, these are quality products. So the most important thing is the quality. And I said, you can have them for nothing. And she looked at me and she said, what do you mean I can have them for nothing? They're expensive. And I said, yeah, but they're good. But you can have them for nothing. And she said, well, how can I do that? And I said, it's simple. You get four members of your family to sign up. And the money you make from their signing up, from your becoming a distributor, pays for all of your supplements. They're free. And that's all you have to do. And she said, <coughs> excuse me, she said, when, how soon can I do this? And I said, well, I'd really like you to do it with me. And I said, I'm still waiting to get clearance from a credit card company that I, that I submitted to. I said, I've already got two uh, accounts with them, but I had a fraud on one of my accounts last year. And so they've held up my quick qualification. I said, but that should be in very, very shortly, and that, that happens to be the case. Uh, will you sign up then? And she said, certainly. And so I'm going to see her next week. So it, it, quality is what's really, really important here. And what's interesting is we all have someone when it comes to a standard orthodox approach in our, in our group who can look at this strictly from a scientific, cellular, functional standpoint. And, and I know where he's coming from because on, on top of my pre-med degree, I have two additional bachelors in nutrition because I wanted to get all of the information and all of the education I possibly could. And that was all that was available at the time. And then a master's degree came on, uh, became available from the University of Bridgeport, and I took that too. So I have two additional bachelors in nutrition and a master's degree in nutrition. And I sit sometimes absolutely amazed listening to Alan Organ go on and on and on because his knowledge of n nutritional need at the cellular level is so profound that if he can get this communicated to the people in the industrialized world that are suffering from the chronic degenerative disease that plagues the industrialized world, it is possible, in my opinion, to see a bloom of health uh, come over the industrialized community. And the best way to do that is personal contact and that's MLM that's people telling their friends it's not people going to a JC Penney it's not people going to a to a local store it's people talking to people that I think is what's really going to make a change in the coming two or three decades and I think it's I think this is a very very exciting company so Alan that's my story that's a great story David so let's let's help our friends out there Let's let's talk about obesity for a minute. Uh, the FDA has recently uh, taken over obesity as a diagnosis, which means that none of us, not even, yeah, not not even physicians can say um, I can cure obesity because you can't cure a disease. The FDA knows that. That's why they're drug companies. So if obesity is indeed caused by inflammation, let's talk a minute about. To, to give some talking points to to everybody on the call today, uh, an idea how they can approach people. I mean, it's it's easy for you and it's easy for me because we have the background. And I, I hear people say, well, I'm not a physician. How, how could I approach a physician? How could I approach somebody about this? Well, well it's easy. Uh, and so let's, let's try and give them a step-by-step -step, uh, way. We know that since 1942, we're pumping about 200 billion tons of toxins into the air, into our water 
every day that didn't exist. So this is surely causing some problems. So, you know, let's first talk about how how can we get out of our bodies these terrible things that may be compromising our health, like toxins. What what's what's been your experience? How how do you approach a patient who you think needs to be detoxed? Well, <clears throat> first. It's not a matter of approaching a patient that needs to be detoxed because my, my practice is based on medical failure. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, I've, I've had patients say to me, uh, who in their right mind goes to a chiropractor who doesn't do manipulative medicine anymore but specializes in allergy and nutrition unless you've tried everything else? And when you think about it, I guess there's some truth to that. Uh, but virtually everybody who walks through my door has three problems. And I don't care what the name that, that, that the previous practitioners have put on those problems. There are three things that you will always find no exceptions with chronic, degenerative, medically non-responsive disease and disorder. The first is clinical or subclinical and mostly subclinical nutritional deficiency. <clears throat> and, I'd, I'd, and I'd like to make a comment about that that's, that's off the subject, if I may. There are, certain, there are certain biochemicals that are essential. Essential means if you don't get them from your diet, you'll die because your body cannot manufacture them. Well, that's really important. Essential means if you do not get them in your diet in adequate amounts, you will die because your body cannot manufacture them, and they're essential for life, for health, and for life. Really, really important. And they're not, we're not getting them in our food the way we used to, because we've compromised the soil, we've compromised our diet, and almost everybody knows that. Dr. Organ has some tremendous statistics on that, and I laugh when he presents it because of the manner in which he presents it. So matter of fact, it, in, re, in reality, it, 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 isn't, it isn't so matter of fact. Because we see people come in and they're suffering from a subclinical deficiency. And eventually, not in a week, not in a month, not in a year, over a period of decades, these subclinical deficiencies will end up causing the death of that patient. You have to have everything that the body needs in order to function or it begins to cease functioning optimally and over a period of time you will die. So you've got to have the essential. So subclinical nutrient deficiency is the first. The second, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pass. The third is overt stress. Now, who do you know that's married? They have overt stress. Who do you know that has children? They have overt stress. Who do you know that backed out of the driveway this morning and ran over the neighbor's cat? They have overt stress. Who do you know that has a job today and is trying to make ends meet? The second, now we've covered the first and the third. Those are always present in chronic degenerative disease. The second is toxicity. And you just heard Dr. Orkin say you can't avoid it. It's out there. So Every patient that comes into my office has to be detoxified. And I compared a product called Restorix about three weeks ago to the products that I have used professionally in my office for the last 30 to 35 years. And I'm in the process of phasing them all out and going to Restorix because it tests better than any professional product that I have used to date. It is absolutely, if you do not get the crud out, you cannot get the machinery working properly. You have, to, you have to get all of the bad stuff out of the body. I mean, how many of us have got mercury in our bodies? Last week, I sent two people to the dentist to have their, their amalgams removed uh, because it was a primary contributor to their ill health. Uh, we drink water that's toxic. Oh, boy, could Dr. Organ and I go on and on and on about that. Uh, but we breathe air that's toxic. Uh, 
quick story. Uh, there was a, a medical doctor who was a very dear friend. He's passed away. And <clears throat> in, in a conversation with him about toxicity, he said, do you remember when you were a boy and there were uh, uh, sanatoriums? And I said, you mean TB hospitals? He says, yeah. I said, yeah, I remember those sanatoriums. People would go and they would spend sometimes months uh, uh, long periods of time, and he said, do you remember the four doctors? I said, no. He said, well, there was the doctor in the white coat. Then they would wheel the patients outside because the doctor in the white coat had to watch the patient, and the patient would breathe fresh air. They would get sunshine, and they would eat good food, locally grown food, and clean water. And in time, the majority of them would heal. And he said, the only doctor left is the one in the white coat. We've killed the other three. And to this day, it, it, it makes all the sense in the world. We've polluted the air. We've polluted the water. We eat food that, frankly, is no, no, no longer nutritionally significant. And it has to be nutritionally significant in order for our body to clean and clear all of the toxins that we come in contact with every single day. And I've had people say to me, well, I'm healthy. Do you think I need a product that's going to help keep me clean? There is no one, no one in our society that isn't toxic to some degree. And when you become diseased, at that point, you are carrying an absolute toxic body burden. This is, Restorix is a critical part of any program uh, to rebuild health. 